Hi! Welcome to Peep Punch Peep Gaming, where today we'll be unboxing this behemoth, Dwellings of Everdale. Elder Vale. <laughs> Yes, and one might think that would be me making a sound when my back is strained, but no, this is me picking up the box of Dwelling of Evervale, or if you ask my wife, Everdale. It's Eldervale. I know, because that's what I called it, but you <laughs> called it Everdale in the opening. So I just want to put this in context. This thing probably weighs close to 10 pounds. And is probably, I don't know, eight inches in thickness. And it's so big, you'll notice that it doesn't, the lid doesn't actually fit on the damn box. <laughs> I have no idea if that's a good thing or not. As we unbox it, we will explore the half inch of box tolerance error that's going on is actually worth it. And I just want to note for those that are curious, this is the standard edition. Not the deluxe edition, but when I start to unpack this guy, or at least take the cellophane, shrink wrap, mm -hmm. bulletproof material off this box, whatever it is, although it does seem a little standard. <laughs> Kristen will talk about the Kickstarter. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so while he, this could be a monstrous task. <gasps> um, so Dwellings of Eldervale. Um, just released in retail and but it was a kickstarter that i think believe started back in 2019 and i looked it up um this thing was i think the original pledge was about eighty thousand dollars they made over five hundred and fifty thousand dollars um and they had over fifty five hundred backers so a lot of people are really excited about getting this game and had you got in on the kickstarter um you could have gotten this base game for 69 bucks. We paid $89.99 and we looked it up online today. The standard is about $99.99 yep. for the base game. Um, for that in the Kickstarter, I think there was a pledge of $99.99 where you would have gotten some custom meeples and some of the stretch goals. And then I think $139 was the top pledge, which would have gotten you all of the extras which we don't even know what that is yet. We're just going to dive into the base game and see what we got. Yeah, we're just going to do a quick unboxing on this big behemoth and see if it's worth your $100 MSRP for just the standard game. I am hearing, though, on eBay currently, and this is uh, towards the tail end of January of 2021, thank God 2020 is over, uh, mm -hmm. that copies of the Deluxe Edition are going for well over 200 bucks at this stage of the game. So the game's in pretty high demand. Uh, but before we start to crack the lid off this sucker, uh, it according to Breaking Games, uh, an ad magic company. I, I'm not familiar with breaking games, but I'm excited to take a look. This is a one to five player, 30 minutes per player, okay. ages 14 plus. So that sounds pretty cool. Okay, uh, we're gonna switch camera views real quick here so that we can do a true unboxing and uh, we'll go from there. All right, here is the top-down view of what we've got going on here. Ooh, I think the lid is made of depleted uranium. Is this a two <laughs> okay, so here is a good look of what we've got here to start with. Oh, but Kristen, before we get started, Ooh. let's show everybody the inside of the box. That is a cool piece of watercolor. What do that you think, Kristen? Fancy and unexpected. It was. What a nice touch. Yeah. I I'm agree. super impressed. Good place to start with. All right, Kristen, I'm going to get this out of the way and let you tee up the next thing. All right. Well, the very first thing that I saw was this because it said important with an exclamation point. Please replace your set of eight elemental starter cards with these eight new cards. So we'll have to take a look at these when we find our elemental cards. You want to crack those open and just take a quick sure look where thing. we're at it? Why don't you grab the uh, rules while I do that? Yeah, no problem. So the rules, again, have this cool uh, watercolor look associated with them. Oh, nicely done on the rule book here. Ooh, very colorful. Yeah. Lots of pictures. Lots of pictures. It's kind of... Um, 
a digital three-dimensional rule book here. It's got the setup, terms and concepts, how to play, dwellings, all that good stuff, free actions, venture card tableau, battle, elemental power, holy smokestacks. End of the game. You know, for being such a big game, the rule book's not huge. Yeah, We're looking at 24 pages. Oh, and I love this. So um, just to make sure we get a really clear picture of this. Uh, one of the features of this game, apparently, are the gamer trays accessory, which seems to be kind of a, I don't want to say a standard, but kind of a hallmark of a highly produced game. And it shows you how to kind of set it up. That is super slick. I'm really excited. All right, let's get that out of the way. Kristen, let's see what you got there. All right. I think we're going to find more of these later, but these important cards are, looks like elemental cards. They're all different, so looks like there's going to be one of each. And they must have found something wrong with the game that they needed to correct because here... Something about wizards and warriors, the cost for wizards and warriors. So that must have been a correction um, here from, so let me get that there, from their original cards. But I'm sure we'll see that when we uncover those. What do we got next? Here, this looks like maybe the first, or not first, but rather the single player supplement. Ah, yes. Could be. Ghost setup, yeah, that seems like it. I did notice in the uh, rules of play they had alternate game modes too, so there's definitely going to be more than one way to play this game. And it did say that you could play one player, so I think that's probably exactly what that is. Gosh, the art is amazing. I do love the art. This guy's my favorite. And look at that. So it's a whole separate appendix. Yeah, this may explain why the rule book was so short. Oh, yeah, look, it's going to talk about all of the monsters, all, oh, all of the different cards, things that you may otherwise find in a rule book, I suppose. Player oh, that factions. is cool. Really cool. Oh, it talks about the difficulty. Oh, the these. factions. Yeah, look at that. So, like, if you were playing the Skyborn Avians, difficulty's easy relative to, say, the Elves of Briardell. Very Which cool. is not the same as Elves of Briar Vale. Correct. There is a difference there. That, that is correct. Bees and, and bees. Here's some frequently asked questions, which a lot of times we're ending up having to Google or, or look on Board Game Geek. Yeah, so that'll absolutely. be nice. Now take a look at this, Kristen. Show this to the group here. All right. Here's your first time setup. So it talks about your trays and where you should put everything. This is really nice. Yeah, there's your dungeon tray all set up. Stickers. It's like putting together uh, Hot Wheels for our son. That's true. Kind of. <laughs> Except for perhaps maybe even easier. <laughs> Quite possibly. Better directions. All right. These are your player reference cards. Two-sided. Looks like they're going to step you through actions and scoring. Really nice card stock. Really good. Yeah, I know you can't see that, but... But the, the... Good thickness. Good thickness. High gloss. Yeah, high gloss. Impressive. It's nice. Really nicely done. Now, Kristen, let me hand you some of these gamer trays. Okay, so these are the trays. And they are plastic, but they're weighty. They've got a... They've actually got a, uh, a top on them. Yeah, pop that top on. Let me try. Let's see. So, I don't know if that's... That's probably just for storage, so when you're done, things don't move around, but... Yeah, the different cards. Yeah, good... Place for, well, I guess, dice. Placement for, yeah, dice and cards. Very nice. Okay, so two of these. Two of these so far. Holy smokestacks. Now we have a big okay. bunch of pop-outs. So, I don't know if you can see how this is many, many pop-outs. Just to put it in comparison, it's probably a uh, half inch in terms of the number of cardboard components yeah. that are in there. Here, while Chris is getting the next, I'll work on opening this guy. Mm. 
I just have to go like this. So if you do get this game and you're going to unbox it, go ahead and plan on like an hour of <laughs> downtime. Tray, ah. tray set up. Plastic opening. How does that punch out of there, those tiles? Let's see. Oh, very easy. Really nice because they've got borders too. Super high gloss. Yeah, really good. Thickness. Nice quality. You've got lots of little pieces too. Now this is interesting because we won't we'll see later. We'll do a review after we play this. But you know, these kind of pop outs, these could be something that would maybe be replaced by a Oh, third party? Yeah. Or as part of the Kickstarter, I know there were some um, custom meeples. Oh, so yeah. I don't know if that's a because I like a pink diamond in my mind. I can envision a a nicer component component there. Um, same with like a little hammer and a sword. So just something we might think about. Me do some research and figure out what the Kickstarter came with. Did you get a chance to show all of the Let's punch board pieces? See, not all of them, but there's a lot here. Because each of these has different... Oh, no. Oh, so this might be one faction. Because it looks like they each have the same... Oopsies. They punch really easily. <laughs> um, they each have the same uh, resources here. Weapons, scrolls, and money. Hmm. So... This is, this was four different, <clears throat> four different boards. Some additional little coins down here too. Yeah, it's important to note that Chris and I effectively know nothing about this game. Literally nothing. But we picked it up um, as something we thought might be kind of cool to review for the, the group as a whole. Yeah, so we don't know what any of this does yet, but it looks cool. So, yep. good start. All right, Kristen, I'm going to hand you what looks like maybe a separate sideboard of magical element tracking of some sort. Yeah, and that looks like this could be scoring here yep. around the border. There's a glory track. Glory track. Yeah, just a one-sided board. Okay. All right. Then I've got some a sticker sheet, Hot Wheels sticker sheet. Love me some stickers. Now, the most stressful thing is making sure you put these on without any bubbles. Yes, just or crooked. Or crooked. So do it sober, never, people. <laughs> never hear the end of that. Oh, just to just to note, you can see where these are going to go. Right? So they're going to go on your oh, trace yeah. there. Oh, yeah. That's good call out. Cool. Here looks like maybe a first, or not first, but a single player component. Yeah, part of the Ghost of Everdale that we saw. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Kristen, it looks like we've got a couple of packs here of player faction boards and they might be two-sided here they are yep so pirates clerics elves rattlings and kind of bad i don't know what these are going to be but really cool art on each of these yeah. and again really high quality boards they're thick yeah. maybe a 16th of an inch thick yeah Something like that. Awesome. Yeah, and here's the other... Another set? Yeah, another four factions, it looks like, maybe. Okay. Let's see. Yep, Wardens, Fire Witch Goblins, Cult of the Night Queen, Skyborn Aliens. All right. Okay. Those are good. Then, Kristen, it looks like we've got two more gamer trays, plastic component trays. Yeah, and you, if you can see here, you can tell. Like, there's your hammer. Here's the diamonds. That's the sword. So the, all those little punch-outs. And, you know, that's good to note because if you had actual um, components, like plastic components, they may not, they may not fit in here. Yeah. Um, they're not. I mean, I'm sure they're, they're great. They're probably what a three quarters of an inch thick. And, and the lids look embossed. They are embossed so that you can see which component goes in which section. Yeah, really nice. And then Kristen, looks like we've got um, four of these trays. And I think maybe those player boards actually fit on top to hold all of those pieces. Well, no, let's just pull them out. Look at that. Fits right on top. So if you're playing the Skyborn Avians or 
the storm, storm horde, horde doesn't yep. matter which it kind of puts it on there and it looks like these factions are asymmetrical meaning i don't know what these rules are but you know this aggression the warrior valkyrie your warrior may join a blah 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 and this one's momentum and then mm -hmm. if you look at the other side of this blue faction for warriors yeah sword sword bringer so cool that that uh promises good variability yeah definitely all right okay uh, so it looks like we've got maybe some Build roof. Yeah, these look like buildings, com building components. Like yeah. So these are, this is just a lot of roofs. <laughs> this, whole, this is a whole I'm bag. I'm just going to be honest with you. We've got a lot of roofs, it's people. a whole bag of roofs or really short huts. So yes. I hope some of there's a bag Maybe of... <laughs> there's a halfling <laughs> faction. I was just hoping there was a bag of buildings, but we'll see. Huts we'll see. to be determined. Okay, so now, Kristen, I, I'm going to hand you a bag that is hemorrhaging wooden meeples. Uh, it has a hole in the butt. <laughs> the bag is... Oh, no. Uh-oh. A torn bag. Fortunately, as a good doll good gamers do we have extra component bags on hand always I'm yes. trash this guy and get him out of there but all right. i think you're supposed to eat that oh sorry we'll feed that to the dog that'll be for the winner <laughs> <Oops. laughs> all right these are all of our many colors of little wooden meeples all right i'm gonna set this down so i don't spill anymore sounds good now Kristen. oh my favorite because we don't already have enough dice in our lives. Yeah, I know some of you are questioning Kristen's credibility at this point as a gamer because <laughs> her call out of dice shortage, but but don't worry. We're still working on this. There we go. Lots Gosh, they're kind of dice. nice pearlescent. Yeah. Um, 12 mil dice, I'd say, not 16, but 12. I think that means small. They're small dice. Not not. Uh, they're smaller Monopoly dice, which are about 16 yes. mil, to put it in context. Which you may not see because I've got huge hands here. All right. Excellent. Lots of dice. Just right. what I was hoping for. And then we got some plastic standees. Plastic standees. And then it looks like some oh, either yeah. they're wizard meeples. Ninja or, meeples? Or maybe portly monks. Mm. It's an interesting stance he's in there. Yeah, like uh -huh. Red Rover, Red Rover, <laughs> send your blue meeple on over. I approve, though. Lots of really cute, like, you don't usually see a lot of light blue meeples. Yeah, some good colors. Yeah, so a whole bag of these guys. Can't wait to find out who they are. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And now I'm going to hand you the warrior bag, I assume. Yes, these same... Basic body shape. I'm thinking that's just their general body shape here. But no, no, that's different. Look. Well. Pull that out. With the leg stance. Whoopsies. Oh, well, maybe it's a really <laughs> a shaky world. No. And you need to, like, really have your legs out wide so you don't fall over. Yes. And that guy's got, like, a, he's a sword and board. Got sword a, and shield. I yeah. like it. All right. Very good. Like one of each color of these guys. Yeah, and then... Here is the, I'm guessing, the wizard. Yeah, it does look like a wizard. Also a nice open stance there. Yeah. I'm concerned about earthquakes. Yeah. And then it looks like some dragon mm. meeples. And then I don't know what who that, that little guy is. whirlwind dude is, but... He seems ominous. But yeah, the rest of these are dragons. These are nice. Yeah, they're super nice. Yeah. It really makes me wonder what the, the upgraded meeples are. Oh, like. Yeah. Here are some, just looks like your run-of-the-mill glass beads, probably for score tracking or... What do we call these? Uh, we call them Dale Chihuly beads because <laughs> they're hand-blown, we're sure. Quite positive. All right, very nice. Okay, um, and then it looks like we've got a little set of cards here that I'm going to pass over to you. Let me just get it started so that they're not too difficult. Here you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Take a So this is quite a few cards here, and they're all comets, great walls, dominion, convergence, peace. 
Are they like, two sided? They no. are not, but they do look different because here's these ones are slightly different. Rise of Hero, Mass Wealth. Okay, rebuild the workshop. So those are actions. Here's some polymorph time warp. So it looks like in total three different types of cards here. Okay. Let's see what those are. Now I want to slide the box back yeah. into view because I think this is interesting to see here. This. So we're just adjust the camera angle just a touch here. Pull it a little bit closer. So I think what you can see here is this tray comes out. Um, nice quality. Not sure exactly what it is. And then we've got another inlay map, or not map, but oh, tray. Go all the way down. Yeah, that goes all the way to the bottom here. That looks like you can put the tiles and some other stuff. Now here's what's interesting, and I wonder if this is placeholder for the deluxe because this is empty there's nothing in here Kristen I don't know if there's anything in that next one I think because we're still expecting some more cards oh there's nope this one's also empty but then there's the rest of that tray. card deck yep so there's uh, the card holders yeah, yeah so you can see. see there you go yeah kind of the the whole tray along the bottom there yeah Hmm, okay. So. All right, let's see. We'll get this one started here. Really a lot of stuff in this. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. There's a lot of stuff, but I think part of what makes the box so big are all the trays, which I appreciate because um, a lot of the times we'll go and spend additional money for a third-party box organizer. Yeah, and I think the reason we do that, just to be quite honest, is... Uh, we want to spend our time playing the game, not organizing to play the game. Mm -hmm. So we find value in getting things set up ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I don't know what these kind of cards are. They're, they've got different backs. We've got some Mother of Dragons, Iron Golem. There's just a whole smattering here. Let's see. Oh, those must be the These are the place. element cards, so... Since we're here, we'll just pull those guys out because these are the ones that are being replaced. Okay. Yeah, lots, lots of different The art cards. is still consistent across all of these decks. Yeah, really nice. All right. Oh, yeah, look at these. I don't know what they are, but they look great. Okay. All right. One Let more me, deck. Oh, one more deck here. Yeah. Love a good fungal garden. Who doesn't? That's always a nice touch. Is that a tr there's a troll's feast? You can see some of them have the you can see the diamonds, you can see the little dudes. I think the term is dudeski. Sorry, the dudeski's on there, so just see how it's all tying together. But okay, great. Corrosive breath. I think they're talking about the dog. That's what I was going to say <laughs> overall. So that, that does mark uh, kind of the end of the components. Let's go ahead and um, talk about our impressions. Yeah. Woo. That was exhausting. That was exhausting. I went and got a couple of a leave from my back from picking this thing up. Uh, and uh, I think we're ready to talk a little bit about what we've unboxed here. So Kristen, where do you want to start? Uh, I don't even know where to start because there's so much stuff. Um, I think, let me just, like, favorite thing right off the bat, trays. So many trays. Let's say one, two, six, seven, eight, twelve, there's... plus the built-in tray. Lots and lots of trays. Um, I think it's great. I think it's going to make organization during gameplay and then set up and yes, break down. absolutely. Easier. So... Love that. Um, you know, I'm often used to the broken token ones, which are which are great. They're really amazing. nice wood. But knowing that these, you know, are already built in is just fantastic. So it reminds me of the Reckoners board game with the gamers trays. Yes. Um, which were very very nice in that case. Why why we're at it? Um, first impressions for me. This is the standard edition of this Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what the deluxe looks like, but I'm already 
I'm impressed by this and makes me say, well, if this is your standard, what are you guys doing for deluxe? Because I bet it's amazing. Uh, the art, the art is incredible. And I love this watercolor theme that we've got here. Kristen, if you don't mind pulling yeah. that up here a little bit, uh, so a little pretty. bit more accurate. Or not accurate, but in front of the camera in that case. And just the touches, like printing that piece of art on the inside of the box lid is incredible. Yeah. Things are high gloss, uh, thick cardboard. Nice. Yeah. Asymmetric, you know, play it looks like. You know, perhaps, oops, spilled a couple dice there. Perhaps the lowest quality thing I'm seeing here, I don't know, is a toss up between. The, these little meeple, the wooden building meeples, I guess, or the dice, and neither one of them are low quality. Like these are kind of pearlescent dice. Um, they're pretty nice. In fact, I'm gonna go on record right now and say the lowest quality component of this game is not these little <laughs> wooden bits right here, but it's the hole in the bag that I've got here. That's the lowest quality thing we've got here. That's that's where I'm gonna go. I'm really having to dig to find something that I. No, no. The one thing that I will say, and again, I don't know what we use them for, but these little there. So there's little diamonds, and there's little swords and scrolls. Like these, automatically scream upgrade to me. Oh, that's a good point. So I mean, these are the sorts of things that I like to see. Um, Maybe 3D components, if nothing else. Sure, but they're nice so, nonetheless. Well, yeah, but for cardboard, for a cardboard component, you know, it's actually pretty yeah. nice. So I'm not going to fault them, but I can see where there's um, opportunity yeah, good call. for upgrades. Cool. And I'll be, I'll, we haven't even played the game. I'll tell you, I'm already really sad that we didn't get in on the Kickstarter. <laughs> I know, that's, so, uh, that's something to be sad. Hopefully, maybe the game's terrible, and we're, but I'm anticipating it's going to be really good and that we might actually want to upgrade these components. Yeah. Okay. So real quick, let's let's talk a little bit about the fact that uh, your husband here went out on a whim and spent ninety dollars. <laughs> and I'll remind you, I saved us ten dollars on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're welcome. Mm -hmm. That's ten dollars. You can buy a bottle of Chablis or something with that if you'd like. <laughs> Who drinks Chablis? I don't know. <laughs> if you drink Chablis, you'll have to tell me about it because I don't even know what that is. <laughs> anyway, so I know that you're not a huge fantasy. Fan in general that's not your favorite genre mm -hmm. so where does this um like in terms of desire to play just based on what we pulled out of this box i have a lot of desire to play and i'll tell you after years of playing with you i've learned to look more at the mechanics than the genre and that's me i think you look you mean like theme when you say genre yeah okay theme sorry theme and genre very different things. So the the theme, um, you know, I could give or take fantasy. Eh, it's fine. I do like the art, and I really appreciate it because it's, it's beautiful. Um, but I look a lot at the mechanics and what I prefer to play. So from what I know, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, there's worker placement. I like anything that's got a nice tile you know one of my very first like real games was settlers of Catan, and they all have tiles yeah. about this size and this shape so that appeals to me um lots of meeples so i think that um the mechanics are going to be right down my alley yeah i'm excited um i think the so you can't argue that I suppose you can argue anything, but for the most part, mechanics really will sell a game or will keep you coming back. How about that? But I think the aesthetics are what gets you to pick up the game in the first place. True. Yeah. And right now, I feel really strongly like um, the folks at Breaking Games uh, really did a nice job of producing what appears to be a high quality game. Really, I, I cannot wait to kind of put this together and get it on the table. I'm already thinking, how do I get people at my house in the middle of COVID, which is probably not going to happen. But nonetheless, you, you see what you see what my thoughts are. Uh, I'm hoping, and this is going to be a steep challenge, but when we do the review of this game, does the mechanics live up to the polish of what we just unboxed? Mm -hmm. That's the question I'm asking. Yeah. 
I completely agree. I, I am very hopeful. I think I'm really looking forward to it. Now, unlike you, I will say that they did a great job with the box as a selling point. Um, and by that, I mean the art. However, had I walked that by that in a game store, I would have run a mile away because it's so incredibly yeah. big. Like it could be intimidating. Yeah, that's Depending fair. on your level of comfort with games. I just have to tell you, it was really funny when Chris came home today. He first brought me um, a game. What was it called? Fairy. Fairy what? Trails. Fairy Trails, right? Cute. Also very nice art. We will review it. We will. It's about this big and it was $15. And so he was like buttering me up to then bring in this behemoth $100 game and plop it on the table. Um, fairy t Trails is something I would have picked up at the game store. Dwellings of Eldervale is something that Chris would pick up at the game store. Hey, that's <laughs> what makes us a team. Anyway, so let's just assume for a moment I pay full retail, 100 bucks. In your mind, looking at all of the stuff we have scattered across our geek chic eight by four table, mm -hmm. and it takes up the vast majority of it, are you feeling like I overpaid on this? No, not at all. Um, I think we're getting a ton of components. I think it's everything seems to be really high quality. And can I just say trays? Like, again, the trays. Well, um. and <laughs> if, if you think about it, so I, um, I have purchased aftermarket tray systems for Terraforming Mars, for Scythe, uh, so Blood Rage. There's a number of these games... And they all vary between like 60 and 100 bucks. I mean, you can easily spend the cost of the board game, at least the baseboard game, and uh, game organization, mm -hmm. which I don't bat an eye at. I think it's worth it because, again, I don't want to spend my time like, oh, where are these pieces and where's that? I want to get the game to the table. I want to set it up and go. I don't want to spend an hour figuring out where all this stuff's at. Uh, but this, there's value to be had in the fact that they've just, they've incorporated game organization here. Yeah, I agree. I think just based on components, I think it was a good buy. Glancing at the rule book, looking at different modes. I mean, the fact that you can even play single player. Yeah. Um, we can play two player, which is really nice during COVID. And I don't know if, you know, they said age 14 up. Our 13 year old could probably swing it. Um, we'll she's drag a, her into it. Yeah, pretty smart girl. Um, but to be able to play this without feeling like we've got to get a whole group at the table, um, during these pandemic times, I think increases its value in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're pretty excited to get this to the table. Uh, we won't belabor the unboxing any longer. Any closing thoughts, Kristen? No. Um, hopefully we'll be back here. Let's say we should try to play this within the week. Yeah. And we can put up the review. So, um, and if anybody got the Kickstarter and you guys have pictures of your components or any comments on the uh, extra components we'd love to see them i think we'll try to do some research and figure out what else is out there um because it's it's a great game and i i imagine you got a lot of really cool stuff absolutely uh if you like what we're doing please like subscribe put a comment down below uh, all of it helps us and we really appreciate the feedback i can already say we haven't been doing this very long but we've gotten some really thoughtful comments from the community, which we greatly appreciate. We're doing this because we love games. We love the community around games. And we love what it means to come around a table and, and just be with other folks. Uh, COVID has been tough, no doubt about it. But we'll get through this and we'll be back at the table with other people. Again, if you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Otherwise, thanks for joining us.